On this episode of A Drier Dose of Disney, we are counting down the top 10 items to bring with you to the parks. Welcome to another episode of A Drier Dose of Disney. I'm your host, Jared Dreyer, and we've got actually a great topic for you guys today. We are going to be talking about the top 10 items that you should be bringing with you to the theme parks, or at least thinking about bringing with you to the theme parks. We've been doing this a long time. These are the top 10 things that we believe are necessary, or at least will make your trip more bearable. They will make your trip more enjoyable. Your family's going to have more fun. You're not going to be as stressed or as worried about things if you bring these items with you. And we want to have fun with this today. So I want you to play along. I want you to be thinking about what are the top 10 things that I think I need to bring with me and then see how many of them you match on the list. Some of these may seem like no brainers. Some of them may seem really simple or basic, but at the end of the day, there's a reason why they're on the list. And we're going to talk through some of those and why those are important. But first, a little bit of housekeeping. We make this podcast free for everyone because we want everyone to have these tips and tricks and be able to utilize them when they go to the parks. We think this information should be free. So it's free to click subscribe. And this podcast is going to be available on video on YouTube, as well as anywhere you find podcasts, whether you're using Spotify, Pandora, you use Apple uh, podcasts, we're out there in all the different platforms. Because of that, we do ask if you have a tip or trick that you found uh, very useful or that it saved you money. We would ask that you donate to us through Patreon. We have a Patreon site as well as it's linked to our website and to our Facebook page. So check us out there. You can do a one-time donation or you can do a recurring donation, but that's what will keep this podcast going and keep it alive. Additionally, we offer private consulting. So we can do one-on-one -on -one consulting with you guys for any of your guys' needs when it comes to the parks. Just hit us up and we'll talk to you about what that can look like. Before I get started today, I've got a great story that I'm going to tell you about that's actually a, a sad story, probably one of the top peaks of my anger that I've ever had in my life. But uh, before we dive into that, every episode, we also use the tagline, I can do this all day, which is Captain America's tagline. And that's how we approach the parks. We've got some cool merch that's out there that's going to be on our website, and we'll talk about that a little bit more later. But for those of you on the video, I am wearing uh, one of our first prototypes of I can do this all day merchandise and it shows the Disney parks and the theme there. So um, again, it's a prototype. We did find that the color of the shirt, actually it can impact your day. So we've made them all white. We wanted to make them the lightest color possible so that you are not picking up the heat when, especially if you're in Orlando, but yeah, we've got our merchandise out there. So check out our website. We definitely want to get you hooked up with some cool gear. So my story, this actually happened recently. And I feel really dumb saying that, but it's a good lesson to learn. And it's a good way for you guys as the listeners to also know that mistakes happen and that it's never going to be a perfect day. And sometimes things go out of control, but we were there, my family. So there's three of us. It was my wife and I and our daughter. And we were there with some family members from her side of the family. And we were at Hollywood Studios and we were very excited about Star Wars Land and Rise of the Resistance. And that was our strategy for the days. We are going to rope drop Rise of the Resistance. And we were at the front of the uh, ticket line to get in through the turnstiles. And we had, like I said before in uh, other episodes, we have annual passes. So we've got uh, usually our passes on our Apple Watches or we've got our Magic Bands with us. And that makes it real easy. On the way to the park that day, my daughter had said, who is 11, that she had forgotten hers and she had forgotten her Magic Band and she doesn't have an Apple Watch. And the mistake that I made was I've got the uh, Disney app and her tickets in there. And I thought, hey, we've used this before. I can just go to the front. And when we get to the turnstile, they'll just scan it on my phone. And we will get her into the parks with us because the ticket's valid. And they say you can use your phone. So that was my plan is we'll just use that. We waited in line with the other park goers there to be at the front for about 15, 20 minutes. Uh, they opened up the turnstiles. We were right there at the very front. And when we went to go through, they said, no, you can't use that. You have to go get her a physical ticket and you have to go back through the crowd to the ticket booth to have them generate one. And we were all just sitting there like we didn't know what to do. And so I looked at my wife and her family members. I said, you guys go. You guys go to Rise of the Resistance. Go get in line. We will catch up to you. And I took my daughter and turned around and saw a crowd of thousands of people behind me that I had to maneuver through to get back to the ticket booth. 
And then they had to print the ticket, which one of the challenges we've had because we have dual residency. So between Colorado and Florida is needing to prove that we're Florida residents. I, I explained it all to her. Luckily, she understood and she just got us our ticket printed. That only took about four or five minutes. But by the time I got the ticket, I turned to go back towards the turnstiles and they are completely backed up. Of course, there are thousands of people trying to get into the park. My wife has already texted me that they are already in queue at Rise of the Resistance. And where are we? And I'm like, I am not even to the turnstile. I can't even get through the ticket area. So we managed our way through the crowd, got in there, got checked into the park. And then if you've been there, Hollywood Studios, Rise of the Resistance, Star Wars Land, the Black Spire Outpost is in the back of the park. So we had to go very quickly to around through the back. And then we were for that one time, which we try to avoid doing this at all costs. But that one time we were that family, my at least my daughter and I, that were cutting our way through the line and trying to navigate. And we kept saying, no, our family's ahead, our family's ahead. We had a lot of people say, yeah, likely tactic, trying to get to the front. Uh, I had one guy stop and say, I'm not letting you buy. And I said, I am going by whether you let me buy or not. And he then yielded and moved and went. I went forward. And luckily, uh, my wife was only about 20 feet ahead of him. He saw her and we got up there and it was a stressful morning. They actually were at the place in the queue and in the line where they go into the pre-show. And so she was waiting for us. Other people obviously were going by them but they're waiting for us. We got to ride it. We had a great rest of the day, but I didn't plan ahead. And that was my number one tip from our intro episode is plan ahead. I didn't plan ahead. So that was a rough start to the day. I was frustrated. My daughter was in tears. Even at 11, she was in tears. She felt bad. She knew that she messed up. And I felt bad at that point for making her feel bad. These kind of things, planning ahead, thinking about these items uh, can change the whole day. You can imagine as we talk through some of these, if you didn't have some of these items, how it could impact your day or your kid's day or your family's day and how it could just go off the rails real quick. This is our list, our top 10 list of the most important items to take with you to the parks. Uh, We're going to talk through each one. I'm going to go into a little bit of depth on each one, talk about why they're important, what we use, what we have found best practices, because we have shifted our best practices over the years. And we've definitely changed the way that we do the parks. I will say a lot of these are going to be dependent on your family, who you have with you, who's in your group. Of course, it's easier for two adults or adults with uh, teenage kids that have cell phones. It's easier for them to navigate the parks than those with little kids or toddlers or infants. Uh, That's a lot more work. That takes a lot more energy to get those little kids through the park. Some of these are going to be different for different people. We have one item on the list uh, that is highly recommended. And it's towards the top of our list because these do go in order of importance. The number one is number one for a reason. But we do have one towards the top that may be utilized in Orlando only, though we have used them in California. Like I said, I encourage you to think about your list and what you would put on your top 10. But we're going to go through ours. And without any further ado, I'm going to jump in. And I'm going to say other than that one item, these all play both California or Orlando. But I do have two honorable mentions. Obviously, number one is the ticket because I just told that story about what happened. We do have a separate podcast that is coming on getting your tickets, magic bands, how to do all that. So please listen to that. That's one of those things you want to plan ahead for. And there are ways to, if you haven't planned ahead and it's a last minute adjustment, you can make those. And I will talk about that in that episode. But the second item, just because I'm a little more light, fair skinned is sunscreen. So honorable mention to sunscreen, please sunscreen yourself, get a a, lather yourself in the morning. I have found though I have a tendency to burn pretty easy. If I get a good amount of sunscreen on in the morning, I usually use an SPF 50. I'm usually good throughout the day, even in Orlando, even if I'm sweating, uh, I usually don't burn. And it's because you're in and out so much through the different rides, the different cues. Uh, You're not exposed in direct sunlight with one exception at animal kingdom. And we will talk about that on the animal kingdom podcast. So be warned, Animal Kingdom, there is one place that you could be exposed to an, an, an insane amount of sunlight. Sunscreen is definitely a plus to have if you burn easily. We do recommend that. But the number 10 items, actually something that is counterintuitive, something that you would not think to put on a top 10 list, but that is a coat or a sweatshirt. And if you're going to Orlando, you're thinking you're crazy, Jared. I will tell you, we take coats and sweatshirts. Actually, my wife and daughter do. I don't. I run a little bit hot, but they take a coat and sweatshirt with them everywhere in Orlando. And there is a very specific reason why. 
And that is because when you go into a restaurant or into a store, especially like a restaurant where you're going to go sit for a while, where you're going to go enjoy a meal, because the heat is so hot outside and people are uh, not usually used to that type of heat if they don't live in that part of the country or in that part of the world, when you go into these stores or these restaurants or even into the ride queues sometimes, they have the AC on full blast. They want... Uh, their customers to feel comfortable. They want them to feel good. They want them to feel relief when they go in. And honestly, I love that. I love that when I go from a hot space outside where it's hot and muggy and I go indoors, whether I'm going to go enjoy a meal or whatnot, because like I said, we like to eat. We love to eat. I like to go into an area that's cool. I don't want to sit outside. I'm that person that says I hate sitting outside. I want to go inside. I want to enjoy the air conditioning. I want to get refills on my soda. So that's, we usually like to go sit. My wife and daughter, though, within about 10 minutes will freeze. The air in the uh, restaurants can be down into the low 60s in some cases. And if you're in an environment where they have got you isolated from the sun, so for example, at uh, Epcot, if you go to Space 220, where you're not getting any natural light coming in or anything like that, it it can feel very cold very quickly. So uh, they always bring a coat or sweatshirt everywhere they go with them. Even in Orlando, I will say in California, especially in the winter months, it's needed. We have been numerous times, whether it's around fall break, the October holidays where you go for Mickey's Not So Scary Party, you go for the Halloween Horror Nights at Universal, it starts getting cool that time of year. Of course, if you go Christmas in California, yeah, it may get into the 60s for the day, you'll get some good sun. It's cold, and if it ever rains, which it does in Southern California, definitely in January, February, you're going to be cold. So you definitely want a coat or a sweatshirt. Orlando, it's the outside. Like I said, it's not going to get that cold. It, it typically doesn't drop uh, much below 70 degrees out there. They do get a couple days a year. It can be cold, and of course, you'd be uh, aware of that if you look at the forecast. But even on the hot days, we say bring a coat or a sweatshirt. We try to bring something lighter. That can go into a backpack, and we'll talk about that in just a moment. But that's our number 10. Number nine on our list, if you have kids that are, I would say, seven or younger, bring a stroller, okay? You may think that, hey, my kid's going to last all day. Bring a stroller. That'll save you from having to rent one if you go all day and it's a long day. Again, our slogan is, I can do this all day. We like to go from rope drop to close in some cases if we can. We like to stay and watch the fireworks shows. They're amazing. We will talk about that on another episode as well, why you should stay for the fireworks shows. But you want to bring a stroller. Your kids are going to get to a place where they want to sit. If you have multiple kids, bring a multiple stroller. I will take this a step further and say do not bring an umbrella stroller. So an umbrella stroller, and I'll throw a graphic up on the screen for this, is one of those foldable strollers that is very small and and very light. The reason I say don't do that, get the full size one, get the biggest one you can get. You're not going to take it into the queues with you. You can't take it into the queues. Disney cast members won't let you. But those big strollers have a lot of storage space and that can save your back from having to carry a backpack all day or from having to carry your coat or carry your bottles of water or carry the items you purchase that stroller can take it all. So we recommend if you've got little kids, always take a big stroller. One tip to point out on this is those big strollers, when you park them near a queue, especially in Fantasyland, uh, so if you're at Disney and you're in Fantasyland, California or Orlando, that is stroller central. You will see thousands of strollers. So you'll park it basically where everyone else does. Do not be surprised if you go wait in a line for about 30 minutes to an hour If you come back and your stroller is gone, it happens. It happens all the time. No one stole it. Okay. I've never seen anyone steal a stroller at one of these Disney parks. What has happened is a cast member has probably moved your stroller. They have designated areas they want to see them in. And it's not uncommon for people to start their own stroller corral and they start putting them all into the same spot. And there's no cast member there to direct them not to. And so the next time a cast member comes by, they will start moving all those strollers to where they want them to be. So the best thing you can do is if you're missing your stroller, come out, look around, look for where there are hundreds of other strollers and go look through those groups for yours. In particular, over by Seven Dwarfs Mine Train, over by Ariel's Ride, there are special areas that are designated for strollers that are like behind walls. 
Universal also has this, especially in the Harry Potter areas where they've got areas that they want the strollers to go. So they will move them over into those areas if you left them abandoned out into the main walkways with everyone else. Don't be scared. Don't be alarmed. Just go find it. If there's a cast member around, ask them. They are more than welcome to, are more than willing to help you and they will find where your stroller is, but it is still there. I've never heard of anyone stealing them. Now, that being said, I would also not leave my cell phone on a stroller. I would not leave money on a stroller or a wallet on a stroller. In fact, my wife learned a long time ago, if she's going to bring a bag, backpack, stroller, something like that, when our daughter was young, she would take a separate wallet that was a small wallet she could carry with her. So that's a good tip. If you're going to take a stroller, just take a separate little wallet, something you can take away. But then if you've got a diaper bag, you can leave the diaper bag on the stroller. No one's going to take your diaper bag. If you've got formula, things like that, you can probably leave it there unless you're worried about the heat. That is our number nine recommendation. Let's go on to number eight. Number eight, this one has come with much hot debate in our household, but that is a backpack or a fanny pack. We have had a lot of debate over this topic. And the reason is now that our daughter is older, she's 11, like I said, she's able to carry a lot of her own stuff. She may bring her own backpack. We are not carrying stuff for her any longer. So the debate becomes, do we really need a backpack? That's up to you. I will tell you why it's important. And the reason is a backpack is a great place to keep some of these other items. We will talk through a couple of them here higher on the list, and I will indicate this is a backpack item. This is something you'd want to carry in your backpack. The question really becomes, do you need that much room? Do you need to have a full backpack on somebody's back that is going to make them hot and sweaty and that they're going to carry around all day? Totally up to you. It depends on what you're going to put into it and what you're going to carry. We have gotten to the point where we've started talking about, hey, can we get away from a backpack and maybe down to a fanny pack? And my wife found a really cool fanny pack that she likes that's a Mickey Mouse fanny pack. And she's now taking that and we're able to carry most of the things in there. Things, for example, like car keys. So if you drive yourself into the parks and you've got your car keys, you're going to need to put them somewhere because there's going to be roller coasters or other rides that they could fall out. I personally, I may take uh, a pair of shorts that has a zipper pocket and I may put my car keys in, in that zipper pocket, which shorts with a zipper pocket is not on my top 10 list, but that could be an honorable mention there as well. So where are you going to put your car keys? Where are you going to put your cell phones there? Again, there are other items. I will tell you looking at it, one, two, three, four, five other items on the list. And this is number eight, five other items on the list that could go into a backpack and should go into a backpack. So totally up to you. What I like when you're looking at a backpack is I like to get a backpack that has the water bottle holders on the side. That way you have the opportunity to put your water in there and clip it in. It makes it a lot easier to go through stuff. Now, the downsides to the backpack, because there are some downsides. Disney, you're good. You can take the backpack on every single ride, even uh, something like Aerosmith's uh, Rock and Roller Coaster, even on Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind, you can take your backpack with you. So it makes it very easy. You just put it on the floor. I would recommend you may put your foot through one of the loops or something. So that way it doesn't go flying when you go upside down on a roller coaster, but you can take it with you. Universal, that is not the case. More often than not on their bigger thrill rides, they will make you load that backpack into a locker, which you will use your uh, park ticket as your key to the locker to get in and out. The issue with that is these lockers are tiny absolutely tiny. You're talking four to five inches uh, tall. They are very small. They would only fit something, a very small backpack. Uh, a water bottle on its side, like a Nalgene type bottle, is I, I think is too big to even go in those. So you need something smaller than that Nalgene type bottle to fit in there. What has worked well for us is not everybody wants to ride all the thrill rides. We have a couple of people that get motion sickness and we'll talk about that on another podcast. So look for that one as well. But because of that, it, it's usually my wife. She will stay off the ride and she will hold the backpack. So that works well for us. We don't have to check it in. If you have somebody in your party who can't ride every single ride, it's always best leave the backpack with them. Don't go to the locker. It's not worth it. The locker takes a lot of time to get in and out of. And there's always a line. It's always backed up. It's chaos in there. The tickets don't always scan right. Sometimes the lockers get stuck. If you have somebody that can hold a backpack, let them. Don't go into the lockers. Then you can just bypass that part of the line. Just go right into the queue and, and start heading forward. So big difference between the two parks there, whether or not you 
You can take your bag with you or you need a locker. The debate, like I said earlier, is do you need to carry such a big one? I am to the point now where I would say I will bring something with zipper pockets that I don't need to carry everything. So I like to move away from it, but there are reasons to bring them. Let's talk about then the number seven item on the list. And this one's a selfish item for me is it's a hat. When you're out in the sun, you need a hat. When you look at the fact that I don't have much hair up here and I shave it down, I need a hat to keep from burning. I need a hat to keep my head out of the sun and to just give me a little bit of shade. I recommend everybody wear a hat. Uh, my wife wears one of those. Uh, I think they're called buffs, the thing you can wrap around your hair and wrap around the top of your head. Uh, she likes that. It keeps uh, sweat out of her eyes. It keeps her hair from getting into her face on most of the rides. Uh, so some kind of hat. One of my recommendations on that is I would not wear any type of hat that has mesh. The old 1980s truck driver cap that has mesh in the back, the sun's going to get right through there. I would wear something that's lightweight, something that will completely block the sun, something that does okay with sweat and can absorb the sweat. And if you ever get a hat that's sweaty, you just need a couple drops of dishwashing or laundry detergent in a sink with uh, hot water and just put that hat in there and uh, rinse it around real good and then let it dry. And your hat will be in great shape. Trust me, I've done this a hundred times. There's a little racks you can put in the dishwasher for a hat if you want to use that. I would recommend do not put them in the laundry. They will get smashed and the bill will get all malformed because that's too much water. You want to put them in the sink, rinse them out, get them uh, good and soapy and, and then clean them out and then let them sit to dry. So a hat is definitely on my top 10 list. That's number seven. Number six, water bottle. We also included on number six, snacks and food. So if you have little kids that need those little pouches of applesauce or something like that, you can bring that along as well. Both parks, Disney and Universal, allow that. So you're totally fine to bring your own little snacks, granola bars, anything to keep your kids busy in line uh, while you're waiting in a queue. Uh, those are good and kids get hungry. So snacks, we like to snack at the park. So we like to buy churros. We like to buy Mickey pretzels or cream cheese pretzels, which if you haven't had those yet, those are amazing. We love a Dole Whip. Uh, there's too many snacks to count right now and to talk about because there's thousands of them. And we have episodes on that. So watch for those uh, episodes on the snacks and the food. But a water bottle, a water bottle is very important. Uh, you are going to be hot. You're going to be sweating. You're going to need the water to rehydrate yourself. So please bring a water bottle with you, which is why a backpack is a good thing. Okay, you have the water bottle holders. You can carry around a water bottle with you. In Orlando, let me go an extra mile here for you and tell you, you want your own water in Orlando. If you've not been to Orlando, the water there has a tendency to smell very stinky like sulfur or rotten egg smell. And that smell uh, could make you not want to drink the water because it can be that bad. Now, Disney has gone really far trying to uh, purify their water and filter it, and it is getting better. I will say over the last few years, I've seen it get a lot better. Universal's water is actually pretty clean. They do pretty well up there, but there is a tendency for water in Orlando to smell like rotten eggs and people don't want to drink it. So if you bring the water from your hotel or a water bottle that you fill up at, you, you stop to get breakfast somewhere or whatever, or a fast food place, you fill it up with their water. Now that water should all be filtered. So bring your own water. Now, what we do to go the extra mile again is our water bottles are the Brita water bottles with the charcoal filter in the straw. We love that because when we have drank our water and we are still at Disney, we can go get it refilled. So whether we refill it at a water fountain or we go to an actual uh, restaurant or quick service stand, they will give you ice water for free. They actually usually already have it out on trays with just dozens and dozens of cups of red, uh, the little red cups of water with ice. And we will take two or three of those, put them all into the one water bottle, but we have a charcoal filter in there. So when we drink it, it doesn't taste bad. It doesn't smell bad. So that is something that we recommend. We are not sponsored by Brita. That is just a tip that I recommend. There are other brands out there. We like Brita though, because you can get replacement filters at Walmart, Target, some grocery stores. So if you're using it and you feel like it's not working very well, or you, you've used it a lot, you can get a replacement filter. They screw right on. They're easy to use, easy to come by. You can also order them on Amazon. So water bottles are very important. What we've also done now is because we've gone to a fanny pack, I've told my wife, we'll just buy a bottle of water. So instead of drinking their stinky water, I believe we pay about three fifty four dollars We will get a bottle of water. We will share it. We will drink it. And we do that a couple times a day. 
I told her at the end of the day, it's, it's more of a desire for me to pay $10 a day to buy bottled water than to have to carry a backpack with big bottles of water on it. Totally up to you, but bottles of water are definitely a necessity. Number five on our list, flip-flops. This one may, it may not have been too intuitive. You may not have thought about flip-flops. I will tell you, you want flip-flops, especially in Florida. And so please make sure you put a pair of flip-flops for every single person in your party, in your backpack, or a change of shoes. The reason it is in Florida, if you've not been there before, it tends to have monstrous thunderstorms in the afternoon that will downpour for 30 or 40 minutes, and then they're gone. But when they come down fast, they come down hard, and you will get inches of water, standing water, everywhere you go. So when that happens, you will see the park shut down, meaning all rides that go outdoors will stop operating. Any park goers, any other guests usually will huddle into a restaurant or into a store and stand there watching because they were not prepared for it. But what we like to do is we like to be prepared. And when it starts to rain like that, we will then take off our shoes, put on the flip-flops and carry our shoes or throw them into our backpack. And we can keep going. We will go out into the rain because of another item on our list here in just a moment. But by having flip-flops, you don't care then if your feet are getting wet. You can run around in those for a little bit. And again, I wouldn't say run. You don't want to run flip-flops, but you can keep going. And it doesn't matter if there's three inches of standing water and if your ankles are getting wet because you're in flip-flops. So that's why we recommend them. They're also great for water rides. Splash Mountain, if you go over to Universal, Dudley do Right, Ripsaw Falls, Popeye's in Bluto's Bilge Barge is one. You've got a water ride over at Animal Kingdom that is the similar one. It's the big round tube over in Africa that you go through all the waterfalls and stuff and you just get soaked. Out in California, you've got Grizzly River Rapid Run. That is one of those round tubes that you just get soaked. So those are great for those rides. So that way your shoes can stay dry and you can put them off and on and, and swap back. What else I've learned is I've found that there are some good water shoes out there. And by water shoes, I'm not talking the ones, the little thin ones that you're going to wear to your pool. I'm talking about outdoor, like trail running water shoes that can disperse water very quickly and they repel water. Though That's actually a type of shoe that I wear. So what I do is when I go out and it looks like it's going to rain, I will wear one of those types of shoes. So that way doesn't matter. I can keep going. They can get wet. I'm not worried about them taking on water. So uh, flip-flops or a change of shoes is something that we recommend, especially for the little kids. How the little kids get when all of a sudden their socks are all wet and they're squishing and everywhere they walk, water's coming out of their shoes and they're unhappy. Take two seconds, get under an awning, swap their shoes out, put on flip-flops, keep going. They're going to be happy. You're going to be happy and you won't have to hear them whine all day. So flip-flops are definitely a necessity. Next on my list is the one that corresponds with that. So number four is a poncho or a raincoat. This is the one that I said on my list earlier is probably for Orlando only, though I have used it in California on a rainy day, but we take ponchos or raincoats with us everywhere in Orlando. We always have them with us because these storms come all the time, almost every day. Like I said, for about 30 minutes, it's a downpour and it is a ton of water. Because the parks stop operating rides that are outside, the rides that are inside are still going. But what happens is within 15 minutes, everyone that was in that queue is cleared through. So we like to keep going and we will go to all those inside rides during the rainstorm because we know that the queues are going to move quickly. We're going to be able to get on. No one else is in there. It's a great time. It's, it's a great way to go through the parks. When the rain comes, a lot of people will actually leave the park. They will take their kids, go back to the hotel if they want to go take a nap, go get a bite to eat, go to the pool later, and they will take that as their exit point. So that is a great point to stay in the parks when it starts raining. You want to stay in the parks when it's raining. The poncho and the raincoat are going to get you there. Raincoats obviously are more durable. They usually have a hood. They're going to not just last longer, but they're more comfortable. So that's something that we recommend. We always carry uh, raincoats for all the people in our party. But we at least always have one poncho because ponchos do really well going over backpacks. And like I said earlier, we typically only take one backpack with us. So that one backpack that's got everyone's shoes in it now, we're in flip-flops. You can throw a poncho on. It'll go over the backpack. Your stuff's going to stay dry. You can keep going. The problem with ponchos is they're not super durable. They're usually only going to last a few wears. If you buy the cheap ones for less than a buck, you're going to get one use out of them. If you buy the ones at Disney or Universal for $10 to $15, usually they're about 12 
you may get seven or eight uses out of them, but they do start to tear. So we do recommend the poncho for whoever's wearing the backpack. What we have done now, let me fast forward to where we're at today, because we're only taking a fanny pack. We like to wear shoes that are waterproof or won't take on the water. We take the dollar ponchos in that fanny pack because they're disposable, they're small, and usually when the rain comes, it comes once and it's done. So we will take those out, we'll open them up, we'll use them. By the time we're, we're done using them, they're, we're tearing them off and throwing them away. And now we don't have to carry around wet gear with us. If you do have wet gear and a stroller, you're in good shape. You can drape it over the stroller. If you don't, usually backpacks usually have the laces or something on the outside. We will put them all through the laces and let them hang outside so that they can dry uh, so that they don't smell like mildew. Because if you take a poncho or a raincoat, you roll it all up, it's all wet and you throw it in a backpack in a dark place, leave it till tomorrow, it's going to smell terrible. So you definitely need to air those out. But a poncho or a raincoat is a requirement in Orlando. Trust me when I say take them with you into the park. If it starts raining and you do not have a poncho, they will sell out very quickly or they will uh, not have them at this store until you go to that other store because they're all out at this one location. If you already have them, you're good to go. You can swap it out, throw it on real quick, and, and you're good. Brings me to my number three. So my number three on the top 10 list. This is arguably, for most people, their number one. This is one that talking to our friends, talking to family, they have all said this is their number one item on their list is comfortable shoes. I cannot stress it enough. There is a great episode of Modern Family where Jay and Gloria are at Disneyland and she is in heels and she is in tears because she is in heels and he buys her Minnie Mouse slippers and by Minnie Mouse, the big, huge yellow shoe slippers. And she is so grateful and her feet feel so much better. She can keep going. Those slippers are not that comfortable. Now, granted, a lot of the stores do have Crocs or other type of shoes. If you have a poor choice in shoes for the day, you can always swap out, but you want comfortable shoes. For me, what that means is I want a shoe that stays and feels soft all day. There are a lot of shoes out in the marketplace that you can wear them. They feel great when you put them on, but an hour later, if you've worn them in, your foot is sunk in and it feels like you're now walking on a board. Your feet will be so tired after the end of the day. We normally clock anywhere from seven to 10 miles in a day at a park. We have gone over that, but our average is about seven to 10, depending on which park we're going to. You don't want to be on your feet for 12 hours, walking seven to 10 miles in shoes that are going to feel like boards in a couple of hours. They're going to hurt. If you do that days on end, okay? So if you're going to the parks for multiple days and you're going to do four or five days in a marathon down in Orlando, which we do, and we have done quite a few times, even my feet, even with great shoes, they get very tired and they start to hurt towards the end of that time period. So we say get great shoes. Now, that'll look different for everybody. I can tell you that we have friends that swear by their Brooks shoes. I have always had really good luck with some Nike shoes though. Nike is not universal in their soles. So I had to find the right ones, usually the ones with air that go all the way through. Those move around enough, those are good. I've got a great pair of Skechers that I absolutely love now. I didn't know about Skechers uh, until recently and how comfortable some of those are. I've used those all day at the parks. And actually, at the end of the day, my feet didn't feel like they hurt at all. So those have been a great pair of shoes. I've heard people swear by hookah shoes. That's what my wife got is hookah. She said that those are great. And I apologize. I don't know if it's hoka, but she says those are great shoes. There are lots of great shoes out there. So just go out there. Try on a bunch of different shoes. Make sure you break them in before you go. I also like, uh, there are some Solomon trail running shoes. Those are the ones that I use for when it's going to be wet because they drain really well. They're waterproof. So lots of good types of shoes out there. Do not do anything flat. I would not do any Vans. I would not do any Converse shoes. I would stay away from those. Any of the Nikes that are the board shoes, the skateboard shoes that are flat sold. I would not do any of those. You want something that's dynamic sold. That's going to be squishy. It's going to move. They're, like I said, they're really good. Adidas, really good. Asics, really good. Nikes, Skechers, Hoka, whatever that brand is. Uh, there's a lot of good ones out there. So go choose a good pair of shoes. Which brings me then to my number two on the list. And this is probably the number one no-brainer that you guys would all argue with me on. And that is a cell phone. Obviously, you're going to need a cell phone for communication with your friends and family, texting each other, stuff like that. But you've probably already started to see you're going to do your reservations on there. So your park reservations, your dinner reservations, you're going to need all that information. 
you're going to have your tickets on there. You can use your cell phone for Apple Pay, Google Pay, Samsung Pay at all of the kiosks, all of the restaurants in every single park. So that is very important. I, I love using that because then I don't have to dig my phone out every time I'm buying something. I can use my Apple Watch, just you know, ping the thing and keep going. If you are staying on site at the parks at on the resort, your magic band will work and bill back to your room. So that's a great feature that you can use to also pay. But you definitely want to have a cell phone. Multiple reasons why outside of those obvious ones. So here are my best practices. I don't know about you guys, but I have to check into work very frequently. I have to make sure that things are going well at the office. I work in finance. So I take my phone with me. And when I get into a long queue, if the queue is going to be usually longer than 30 minutes, I will break out my phone and I will start reviewing emails and I will start responding to emails. So that way, when I get back to work after my vacation, I'm not backed up. I'm able to stay in touch with what's happening at work. It hopefully is not interrupting my vacation time, but I'm able to at least worst case, just clear out junk emails that I don't need. So I will do work while I get into the queues and just answer a couple of emails. If they're quick questions, you can play games. So I, I don't know if you guys have played heads up the game that Ellen has and that you've seen on a lot of stuff out there. Heads up is a great game uh, to play on your phone while you're in a queue. There are even free Disney packs that you can download when you're in the parks. And it's a password charades type of game where you're going to have something on your forehead. You're going to have a word like Cinderella and the people in front of you are going to say, this is the Disney princess whose castle is here in this park. And it's of course, Cinderella. And you tip it forward to get it right, tip it back if you got it wrong and you can keep score and the smartest person in your group gets to win. So that's a good way to burn some time while you're in line. What I like to do is I like to look at queue times when I'm in line. I like to strategize, where are we going to go next? After I finish this ride, what, what's going to be our next destination and what rides look really good on queue times. And we're going to have a whole podcast on queue times and how Disney and Universal manipulate those. So that is a great uh, podcast to listen to. You can also, if you're using Lightning Lane, you can uh, start scheduling your next Lightning Lane while you're in the queue. So that's why the cell phone's important. Your cell phone is going to get more use while you're in the theme parks than it does on a typical day. You are going to be on the phone all day. So a cell phone is an essential piece. I have seen couples that will uh, tag team it. So one person's on their phone the first part of the day, managing park things like Lightning Lane or their reservations and stuff like that, while the other person's playing games. And then vice versa, one person's checking emails, the other person's checking their stuff. So that is the number two item on our list, which then brings me to our number one item on the list. This is our, I can do this all day, tip of the day, is you want to make sure 100% you bring a battery backup, or sometimes I've heard them called fuel rods, fuel cells for your cell phone to the park. That is your number one item, okay? You want that power bank with you with a charge cord. You don't know how many times I've seen people in the park that they don't have their charge cord. They brought the power bank, but they don't have the right cord. So make sure you bring a power bank with a charge cord for your phones. You will probably somewhere around two, three in the afternoon, run out of juice in your phone. It's going to be dead because you've been using it all day. You've been playing uh, heads up in the line. You've been checking your emails. You've been updating your lightning lane. You've been looking at cues at Universal. Uh, you can order food on your phone at Disney. And we'll talk about that in another episode. So you've been using your phone all day. Maybe you get out of line. You call somebody, you text somebody, you're keeping in touch with your group. Your phone's going to die. So you're going to want that power bank to recharge your phone get it up and running again and keep it going through the whole day. Of course, at night, when you get back to the hotel, plug in your power bank, charge that one as well. There are a lot of power banks out there in the market that can charge a phone four or five, six times. So that way you've got enough charge for multiple people in your group. Buy a power bank. That is my number one tip of the day. You want to take a power bank with you to the parks to charge your phone when it dies because it will die. So, that is our top 10 list of things that you want to bring with you to the parks. I hope you enjoyed it. If you got anything out of this episode today, we do ask, uh, please visit our Patreon, make a donation, listen to our other podcast episodes. We've got great ones out there. If you like our logo for I Can Do This All Day, go to our Etsy shop and, and visit that. And finally, the last thing, we have a condo down in Orlando, and we rent that out through Verbo and Airbnb, as well as through a direct link site. So if you want to stay where we stay, which is only a couple miles from the park, it only takes us a couple minutes to get in there. Check us out on Facebook. We've got a link there to our direct booking site. 
you can go in there and see our place. You can see how we've decorated it, how we've made little Disney touches everywhere because they're all over the entire place. And you're welcome to stay there. So you can just book that out and rent that for your next vacation. We'd love to host you there. Thank you for joining us today on A Drier Dose of Disney. We look forward to seeing you next time. If you haven't clicked subscribe yet, please do. And we'll talk to you later. Thanks. 